So this morning, we're very excited to uh, let you know on your agenda, you'll see Dad Curry first, but we're going to have a change in the program. We're going to have our sheriff go first because he is here and we're very honored to have him in our presence this morning for all the things he's doing for small business. And he's going to tell you about some other initiatives. Following his, him and then his department presentation will be followed by Dan Curry with our facilities department and then their presentation. Does everybody have an agenda? Everybody picked up an agenda outside? No? Yes? Okay, this is an interactive. Like I said, the sheriff is here. We have plenty of handcuffs if you don't act right. So we want your interaction. We want your questions. We want to know what we're not doing or what we can do better for you to do, be able to do business with us. You'll see flashing on, on, the, on the overhead, the counties, uh, our new Swimmy website. We're updating it, refreshing it, and putting more information and actually putting a, a calendar. So we'd like for you to take a moment, sometime later on this week, go in and look at it. If it doesn't make sense to you, send us an email. Uh, if it's nice, send us that email too, because we're working hard to be able to bring out more information to what we're trying to do here at Bear County. And on behalf of Bear County Commissioners Court, uh, we really appreciate each and every one of you who do business with us. In saying that, it is my honor uh, and extreme privilege to bring up Sheriff Salazar uh, and all of the things that he's doing. Uh, you, you see, he's cleaning out, he's cleaning up, and we're excited about it. <laughs> so please welcome Sheriff Salazar. Thank you, ma'am. Most days we're excited about it. Good morning, y'all. I'm Sheriff Javier Salazar, or as I'm more commonly known, I thought you'd be taller. <laughs> it is what it is, right? Well, I'm happy to be here talking to all y'all about, about uh, how we can work together. Because that's, that's what, since we've hit office, that's what we've been all about, is finding ways to, to work better with the community that we serve. When I, take, when I took over the Sheriff's office, we had basically two functions. We had law enforcement in the unincorporated areas of Bear County, and the jail. That was it. And I thought, wow, there's, there's a lot of opportunity missing there along the middle, things that we could be doing. First and foremost, I'm the Bear County Sheriff. That's 1.8 million residents. Um, we don't ignore the 1.5 million that live within the city of San Antonio. They're my responsibility too. They pay Chief McManus's salary, but guess what? They also pay mine. So uh, the way I see it, you should be entitled to twice the, twice the protection. You're, you're, you're paying for two department heads, right? And so I, I figured out ways, we, we, we need to figure out ways to get, to get to those folks a little bit more effectively and to help them out with what it is that they need. So we're positioning ourselves as an agency to be more proactive. Uh, well, what, is, what does that mean? Well, you know, along the years, along my whole career with the SAPD, I've concentrated really heavily on crime prevention. So we concentrate, when we talk about crime prevention in the traditional sense, it's putting window locks on your doors, uh, you know, figuring out how to do home security survey, bigger screws in your door plates to prevent residential burglaries. And I said, well, you know, as a county, let's concentrate a little bit more on, on what we're calling now crime prevention 2.0. So while it is still important to prevent burglars from kicking in your front door um, and from, you know, burglarizing your car, from stealing your front your purse off the front seat at La Cantera because uh, you left your purse on the front seat. It's also important to start preventing things like human trafficking, cyber crimes, opioids, synthetic drugs. Those are the kind of things that'll kill you. Those are the kind of things that they're, that literally human traffickers are, make no mistake about this, targeting your kids in your schools, in the privacy of, your, of their bedroom in your house through, that, through the computer. They're targeting us. So we need to be preventing that kind of stuff as well. And that's what I saw as, a, as our opportunity as the sheriff's office to position ourselves to be that linchpin, to, to be that linchpin not just to you guys and how to prevent all these nasty crimes that, that people are inventing new ways to, to get you and your money and your family on a daily basis. We need to prevent that. But we also need to be a better linchpin between the feds, the federal government, and local, local uh, law enforcement. And that's what we're trying to do. Now, how do you guys come into that with us? Well, we're asking businesses, small and large, to partner with us on ways to, to prevent crime. Right now, we're working on a plan, and I'll be, I'll be in more of a position to announce this in the next coming months, uh, the next few months, probably uh, by, the, by the big event that Renee was just telling me about in December. We're looking at ways to partner with, with uh, businesses of all kinds 
on establishing best practices security wise not just again not just preventing robberies but preventing all these other things well you know you're saying well you know i own a small liquor store or i own a small convenience store how do i help with with human trafficking believe it or not there are things that you can do indicators that you can do to help us with human trafficking if you're a realtor there's things you can do to help us address human trafficking there's things that you can do to help us address you know grow houses in a, in a neighborhood stash houses where uh, where victims of human trafficking are being stockpiled until they can be moved further north. There are things that you can, you can do. It's just our job to give you the indicators of what to look for and, and how to do that. So that's what we're hoping to do is, is establish a business partnership where we can do that um, and also help you out with, with a little bit of, uh, of preventive measures that you can take within your business to prevent the other, the, tradition, the more traditional sort, sorts of crimes like robberies and things like that from happening. So we're, we're on the verge of building that, and we're, we're going to be in, making some, some important announcements before too long. But I just kind of wanted to give you all a little teaser on that. Uh, the fact that you all are here tells me that you're perfect candidates for it because you all care about your business. You care about how better you can work with the county. Um, you all are a good captive audience for me for, for this kind of stuff. And so I applaud you all for wanting to take a more active approach, how to make uh, the county better. How, how to make your relationship with the county better. And so I'm excited for all of you. I'm excited for the fact that you're all here. And again, I thank you for that. Uh, here representing the, uh, the, the Bear County Sheriff's Office, there's some people in the back I want to introduce, and then I've got another, uh, our next, one of our next presenters that's going to come up and talk to you all. But in the back of the room, there's, there's some important people from my command staff. Um, on closest to the door is Deputy Chief Roy Fledger. He's my Deputy Chief over Patrol. Right next to him is uh, Chief Deputy Dante Carina. He's number two in command of the Sheriff's Office. And to his immediate right is Assistant Chief James Serrato. When I talked about establishing that middle division in the Sheriff's Office to kind of bridge the gap between the two, uh, Assistant Chief Serrato is the one that heads that. It's, it's my, uh, my shared services and administration. He's my Chief of Staff. And so what he does is he oversees all the shared services, so all of our recruiting, our training, um, policies and procedures, the training academy, all the stuff that feeds off into the other two branches, he oversees that. But he also oversees a lot of our crime prevention efforts and our counterterrorism and, and uh, human trafficking is all under, under Chief Serato. Uh, he also oversees this next gentleman that, uh, that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to introduce. Uh, Mr. Man Manuel Angeles is our business manager for the Sheriff's Office. And he's going to come up and talk to you all a little bit about, about what he does and how best he can help with, with what we're doing today. Again, I just want to say once again before I head out, thank you all for taking an act the active approach in being here. It shows that you care about your business. It shows that you care about the county. And I'm certainly a fan of that. So thank you all very much for, for being here. You're in for, for some great stuff from these speakers. Thanks, guys. Sheriff Salazar, thank you for that wonderful introduction. Um, my name is Manuel Angeles, and I'm the uh, Bear County Sheriff's Office Business Manager. I've been with the, uh, the Bear County Sheriff's Office now. Uh, just celebrated my 10th year anniversary, and in my current role as a business manager, um, I've been operating now in, for a total of about seven years. So what you have before you right now is figures that are outlining our uh, contracting and procurement for physical items such as supplies and services. Supplies and services. Supplies are those basically those uh, individual items that uh, we store on our warehouse shelves, those unique items that our officers, detention and law enforcement need to perform their duties. Okay, so we're talking about papers, pencils, uh, computers, furniture items, forms, all those individual items. And then on the services side, those computer services, uh, software applications, um, the ability to transfer, trans, uh, for information from our internal departments to external agencies. Um, as it is, what it's been said, it takes a village, right? Oops. So what you're looking at now is, historically over the years, <coughs> Go back to historically over the years, we've been uh, 
spending significant dollars. And for fiscal year uh, 2017, we spent a total of $8,340,000 in for purchases of services and items. Now I have highlighted up here two line items, which deals with clothing, uh, bedding and utensils, and warehouse shelf items. Basically, that's primarily the bulk of items that we're looking for interaction and support from the local community. For you folks out here as vendors trying to provide that needed support that the sheriff's office has. Okay? So as we take that $1.1 million requirement, we're going to bring it out to the different types of items. And as you can see, uh, by the dollar values, what we're requiring in each of these different expense items, it's significant. If you look at the totals, we're talking about 20,000, 8,000. These are these are cases, these are rings, these are boxes, these are individual uh, quantities of the, the requirements that we have. Now the Sheriff's Office as other county agencies, we all operate on a fiscal basis. Our fiscal year is from 1 October to 30 September. So come 1 October, we're going to be in fiscal year 2018. That means we had to have submitted our budget for next year we submitted it back in May. So we have forward planning that always has to be done year by year. And then part of that planning is to find out who are the vendors that we're dealing with, what contracts we're going to establish for the required supplies and services that we need. That's why it's so wonderful to have you folks here with us today uh, being part of this venture going forward. From a, from a clothing and bedding perspective, this listing here is just a small listing of all different items and quantities that we need to, for the detention side of the house. The sheriff's office has the capacity of housing 4,500 individuals on any given day. 4,500, that's a lot. And you know also that we are arresting, on average, about 6, 658 individuals. So 658 individuals come in per day, 4,500 get housed, 250 <coughs> individuals get released. Once we reach capacity, we ultimately have to transfer individuals to other facilities. But in essence, we're at capacity right now. Now, it takes a lot to clothe individuals, to feed individuals, to make sure that their needs are being met, because again, they're under our care, and we have to provide those required services. Okay. So again, you see we have uniform requirements for the inmates, we have bedding requirements, we have uh, showering, showering requirements, all those different types of supplies that are required just to make sure that at the bare minimum we're meeting their needs. Next slide. Now, from an administrative aspect, um, the Sheriff's Office has 1,900 employees. And that's law enforcement, that's detention, that's civilian staff. We all use computers, we all use forms, we all use those daily supplies that to some extent we all take for granted, uh, to exercise our ability to meet that mission that the, that the sheriff has outlined. And so you can see here uh, some examples of the different types of supplies that are utilized. Printer cartridges, printers, printers, forms, envelopes, pens, pencils, cartons. There's a long listing here. Now, all these supplies we utilize uh, for the majority part of supplies available on our warehouse shelves. We have a system called Lawson. It uh, manages the reorder points for all these inventory items, because we have to have them available. <coughs> That's where the vendors come in. We will be establishing contracts for your, for your individual departments and or companies, and we will be ordering supplies from you. We need just-in-time delivery. Our warehouse spacing is very small, so we have to manage that spacing relative to the office, uh, supplies that need to be issued out to the individual departments. The sheriff's office is configured in 11 different buildings. Okay, so imagine 11 different buildings. We got a warehouse full of items that we need to keep constantly stocked with rotating items that, as they're going on. And with 11 buildings, we have five supply guys, five supply facilities. So imagine that five individuals are working their uh, their hearts off, getting the needed supplies to all the different 11 buildings, all the different individuals working in different offices. We're running a 24-7 operation. The sheriff's office does not sleep. Okay. So we're there constantly moving and rotating items and ordering items. Um, uh, 
we have a system again that's called Lawson that manages our supply items. So we have reorder points. As an individual item comes out to a certain point, the PO gets cut and automatically sent back to the vendor saying, hey, we need more of your product. So that gets shipped in. We have one warehouse stocking station where everything comes in. So vendor trucks are constantly coming into the, to the warehouse for us to be able to uh, facilitate the unloading and loading of supply items put back on the warehouse shelves. Hygiene items, very big thing here. Again, we're, we have capacity of 4,500 individuals that we have to uh, maintain the custody of. And as such, we go through a lot of different items that we're ordering from them. So individual items that clean services, the items that are for the ladies, basic soap items, uh, gloves, physical soap items. As you can see, significant dollars that are being spent for these, especially soap. You know, like so far this year, we. Uh, purchased 750 cases. Uh, go back. <coughs> you spent 750 cases of soap at the cost of $29,000. And such. We have um, razor blades, individuals have to raise. We have toothbrushes. Anything that you would basically take, uh, be using in your own homes, we're using here for the care and well being of the inmates. So again, we have these requirements. We have janitorial supply issues. The, most of the janitorial cleaning is actually done uh, by the inmates or within the secured areas of the jail uh, under the supervision of the detention officers. So being that the case, we uh, have to maintain a certain uh, level of cleanliness relative to jail standards and make sure that these items are available uh, for use by the inmates. So room, cleaning supplies, toiletries, uh, garbage bags. We go through a lot of toiletries. Four thousand five hundred individuals. That's a lot. Pretty okay. inviting. This is just a, uh, just take a look, look at this picture. This is a small little photo of our, our warehouse on the left hand side. All of that is forms. We go through a ton of forms. Because again, we have to document the, those different aspects of providing care, of the arrest process, of all the bits of information that are being utilized by the detention and law enforcement officers. And again, the, what we're spending for in the different types of forms, it's, it's a significant uh, amount of money and such. <coughs> so earlier, I alluded to that $8 million in terms of what we're doing uh, for procurement, for supplies and materials. The dollar value comes back to what we're looking to, to get a uh, control is about a million dollars plus. Now, a very interesting thing is that the Sheriff's Office when we're, we're going to interact with vendors, we have certain rules that we have to follow by. The procurement rules that are driven by the dollar value of what we're trying to buy. So between zero and $5,000, we kind of have a say as to which vendor we're going to be dealing with. Between $5,000 and $50,000, well, we have to provide a justification uh, as to why we want to deal with a specific vendor. And between anything over $50,000, and those uh, types of uh, bids, as they're called, have to go before commissioners court for them to sanction uh, that particular vendor to deal with and such. So the question is, how is it that you folks can help us? Well, first off, we need to know who you are. We're asking you all to become registered within Swimby. Get yourselves uh, your contact information updated so that we at the Sheriff's Office can go into that database and look you folks up in terms of uh, finding those particular vendors that meet our needs for the supplies and finding those needs for the services and such. Okay? It's like the, date, the dating game. Okay? We're all trying to find uh, somebody to help us out with you know, making that best relationship going forward. Okay? Um, to give you a, a little peek into, uh, well, what's, what's the fiscal impact here in terms of data detectives? Well, we looked at the, the, the top dollar spenders, and guess what? San Antonio is getting about 88% of the cash out of that 400,000. San Antonio, But we're trying to bring, again, if you remember earlier, I alluded to 1.1 million, or 8 million. The majority of our supply needs are out of state, out of county. We want to bring, we want to bring those dollars back into Bear County. Okay? 
And I know you folks have the capacity and you have the desire. And we want to meet up with you and partner with you to do this. Okay? So that's what we are here about forming community, forming relationships, forming that partnerships with you folks here, you vendors, in terms of us meeting our law enforcement mission and vision, and you folks uh, becoming part of that. So with that being said, um, I'd like to allude over to another uh, member of our staff who's going to continue on. Hello, I'm Sergeant Gonzalez with the Bear County Sheriff's Office, obviously. I work in the community services uh, section. Um, we're here today. Um, our idea for small businesses uh, is obviously one of the main concerns for us is uh, crime prevention. Uh, how to battle that. And laying the foundation for crime prevention. Reduce commercial crime, reduce fear for, from crime from customers and businesses. Overall security to determine vulnerability. Physical layout, exterior, interior, number of employees of hiring practices in various types of crimes. We'll get a little bit more in depth. Our idea is a, an assessment of your business to physically go out. Uh, if we can get to the next slide here. Security controls are essential to comprehensive security. Uh, from casual trespassers to committed criminals, poor physical security can jeopardize the confiden confidentiality, integrity, and availability of business process and safety of personnel. This can also impact the revenue and cause substantial loss. Our idea, what we envision, is a gold badge certification. Uh, this is a physical assessment of the businesses, um, and I'll let I'll pass this over to Mark, who's in our unit, and he is a crime prevention specialist. Uh, Deputy Mark Martinez, Bear County Sheriff's Office. Uh, performing day and night assessments of the facility, what we do is we'll go, just like it says, in the daytime and then at night to give you an assessment. Uh, a lot of people, we, we fall under the tax of, of Step Tech, which is crime prevention through environmental design. What a lot of people don't realize is that at at these locations, it may be that we can increase the visibility just by cutting down a tree, by lowering the size of the bushes. That may increase that may increase crime better. That may increase crime prevention. Uh, so we're going to do a physical assessment of your location. We'll evaluate the perimeter defenses, access control systems, alarm systems. There may be other. There may be simple ways of just keeping the doors locked, of not having them propped open in the middle of the day. These are just simple things that, that we overlook a lot of times. That, that you can utilize, and we'll give you all these different tips. We'll look at your, I'm sorry, we'll look at your video surveillance and other types, types of control, and we will provide a minimum and maximum uh, assessment. What that means, we'll say, this is what, this is your basics, this is what you can utilize, and this is maximum efficiency, we'll give you both. We'll go from one end of the spectrum to the other. What that does is this covers major gaps and vulnerabilities. We've even got, if this is what we've gone to, and all they need to do is lock their windows at night. They're getting broken into because someone doesn't close the windows. If you have someone scheduled to check in the evening, go by, make sure everything's closed. These are simple things that we take for granted and we will give you these. If we provide this to you on paper, it's like, oh, here it is, this is what I need to do, here's a checklist, and we'll provide you with all of that. Let's go to the next one. Sheriff's Gold Badge Safe Business Award. It's under development. Uh, organizing a business watch, get to know uh, owners, employees, community partners for businesses, offer crime prevention tips, offer seminars, business associations, address business concerns, increase partnerships, community associations, strong stake in community strategies for community and business associations. Uh, with the Gold Badge certification for your business, uh, we envision uh, this would aid your business in where somebody traveling or not familiar with the area would go to your business when picking or trying to find maybe a hotel to stay at or your particular type of business has that gold certification. Um, we think it would be more appealing from you know visitors from out of state or out of town uh, feeling safe that you have that. So it's still under development and we're working and uh, 
And that's what we have on that. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, any ideas? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And we're working on it now. And so um, if there's anything from your side uh, that we don't see internally from your perspective, uh, we're open to that as well. I can leave you with my information, and um, we're interested in hearing that. And uh, thank you for your time. No. Is there a cost to this program? Uh, well, it's still under development, and we're working on it. Uh, we, we plan to have no cost involved at all. Yes, ma'am. Yes, we would. We'd put on seminars and we'd give tips and we'd be involved. Maybe. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Clarification: This is available for all businesses. Yes, sir. In the county, even in the city. It, in, in both. Right. Yes. 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 And we currently we currently offer uh, home and business assessments, and there is no charge to the county. You can go to you can go to private companies and private organizations, and they will charge you up to thousands of dollars to come and do a business assessment. And a home inspection, they will come and do a home inspection and they will charge you, you know, a few hundred dollars. I don't know if anyone's tried to sell a home recently, but they want a home inspection for safety. We will do that at no charge to the to the citizens of Bear County. So we'll do that for home and business. Uh, some businesses will charge, uh, companies will charge ten, fifteen thousand dollars for a business inspection. I think a few of you have dealt with that. The sheriff's office will provide that for you if you're a business within the, uh, Bear County. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give them a round of applause.